Oh, snap. You're watching The Political Vigilante. Guess what we're doing, everybody? We're making Gotham great again. And adding more shows to the Progressive Comedy Tour November. We're going to Northern California. Ron Placone and I just started adding some dates in Florida in January. Tickets are at GrahamElwood.com. Have some local shows here in L.A. September 22nd. Please join us. Let's get excited about a progressive comedy tour. Let's start banging it out, you guys. Those shows, the live shows are amazing. They're so much fun. It's more than just a comedy show. It's political activists. We're going to try to get candidates and the Democratic Socialists of America have shown up to a lot of shows and we want to get people involved in your community and you also get meet a lot of progressives there. A lot of people show up to the shows alone or just with one friend and then they start talking and get involved and this person's working with this group and that group and you get more involved. That's a big part of the show and you laugh your ass off. It's, it's fantastic. I love doing them. They're my favorite shows to do. They are my favorite shows to do. <laughs> that and the Jimmy Dore shows live are my favorite shows to do. So I want to talk about the environmental impact of Hurricane Florence that has hit the Carolinas recently this week. And they worry that Florence will leave behind a toxic mess in North Carolina. This was in the LA Times, September 18th. And the article follows this guy who's basically uh, like a paparazzi, but for environmental disasters. He goes and shoots all this stuff. And there's a lot of things I never even thought about. And this is what's one of them. Hog farms are one of the most problematic environmental challenges after Florence dumped a historic amount of rain on the region, but they're far from the only one. Advocates have been keeping a close eye on coal ash basins where the residue from power plants is stored and toxic sites across the state. Floodwaters can rise enough to mix with contaminants and then deposit them back into rivers and wetlands that provide drinking water and natural habitats. You know, people on the right say that climate change is a myth and it's just a liberal hysteria. No. All of the, some of these things we, even, we can't even think about. When, when floods, look what they have. And hog farms and raw sewage gets put into our drinking water. Toxic waste. I mean, did we learn anything from what happened in Fukushima in Japan in 2011? And as we've talked about on this show, the rising sea temperatures doesn't create more hurricanes, it just makes them more powerful. And then there's all this to contend with. But of course, there's a big pork lobby in North Carolina and they're gonna, ba they're gonna fight this. Is bacon really worth it? I hope so, man. <laughs> in the past, powerful storms have prompted sweeping changes in North Carolina after Hurricane Floyd battered the state in 1999 and dead hogs floated in the flood floodwaters. Hey Graham, how come you're a vegetarian? I don't know, floating hogs? The state budget bought out farms in vulnerable areas. It remains to be seen whether Florence will prompt similar policy changes with farms or any other industry. Researchers and advocates said it's time to update the rules for where facilities can be located and how waste can be stored as hurricanes appear to be growing more common and bringing heavier rainfall with them. This is the LA Times reporting this. That's good. We gotta wake up to this fact. We're in a climate crisis. We have until 2030 to do drastic change. Otherwise, it's gonna to be too late. Get involved, especially if you're young. Get involved. Another problem was suffered at the Shutter Duke Energy power plant near Wilmington in the southeastern corner of the state. About 2,000 cubic yards of coal ash were displaced when water ran into a landfill, although it's unclear how much reached the nearby Cape Fear River. Monitoring trouble spots is a severe challenge after a hurricane. The same floods that have trapped people in their homes have also cut regulators off from the facilities they need to monitor. The U.S. Environmental Protection Agency plans to deploy teams Wednesday to high priority toxic sites and state officials are trying to do the same. All right. But guess what? It could be days, weeks, or even months before the full extent of the damage from Florence is even known. That's the thing with these big disasters. There's all this clean. We don't even know. We don't even know what's been damaged and what's going where. We don't know what's spilled. We don't know what's. You see all this this footage of these. You know, 
the streets and people are, there's water coming up to their chest or whatever. What's in that water? Rivers are still expected to rise and flooding could reach more farms, coal and basins and other industrial sites. It's a slow process that can hurt the ecosystem and the people who live there and fixing the problem can be just as slow. Environmental protection is the long-term problem long after the media has gone. That's the thing. The media's all there right now. And they'll talk about the cleanup a little bit later, but then there's, I mean, is the media still in Puerto Rico? Are they still in Houston from last year? Remember we talked about that last year, all the oil refineries in Texas when they got hit? Recovery is really tough and you have to keep people safe through the entire process. Protecting and saving the environment should be every single person's number one motivation for anything that you do. It should be. However you vote, stuff you buy, all of it. All of it. All of it. 2030. We have until 2030. Thanks for watching the show. Thanks for being involved. All of you together are political vigilantes and all of you are making Gotham great again. Thanks for watching.